Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Summer from Columbia University. You may have found this video today because you or someone you know suffers with severe migraine headaches. One of the really interesting areas of research in the migraine field is the relationship between headaches and having a small hole in the heart called a patent foramen ovale, or PFO. This area of research is very new. We've been tinkering around the edges of it for years, but this year for the first time there's going to be a national trial to study this relationship in 2019. Today on this video I wanted to review with you some of the physiology linking the migraine and the PFO and also discuss what are current recommendations for patients such as yourself. An estimated 40 million Americans have migraine headache, but what is surprising is how poorly we understand the underlying processes which trigger the headaches. One way to think about migraine headaches is like having a fever. The fever is a symptom of some primary illness like strep throat or an ear infection or pneumonia. Similarly, the headaches are the symptom, not the illness itself. But unlike fever in migraine sufferers, the underlying causes are not well known, which makes it very difficult to choose medication or treatment for each individual, as each may have a different cause. For nearly 20 years, we have known of a link between migraine headache and a common defect in the heart wall called the patent foramen ovale, or PFO. We don't understand exactly how a hole in the heart can cause migraines, but since the late 1990s, it has been shown that repairing the heart defect can markedly reduce or even eliminate migraines in some patients. Until recently, we really haven't had any idea how to choose the right patients for this unusual headache treatment. Before we get to that, though, we really need to understand a little bit more about the patent foramen ovale and how the heart works. Long before birth, the two top chambers of the heart, the right atrium and the left atrium, shown here as if we were looking at the patient from the front, start out as a common chamber. The wall that will ultimately separate one side from the other grows in two pieces. A thick piece grows down from the roof and a thinner, floppier piece grows up from the floor, overlapping but not connecting to one another, forming a flap in the heart wall that can open and close, allowing blood to cross from the right side of the heart to the left. This is a critical pathway in the fetus because of the fact that the baby is not yet breathing. At birth, when the baby takes his or her first breath, the blood pressure on the left side of the heart increases, pushing the flap shut. Over the next few months, the two pieces of the wall grow together to create a solid boundary which the blood can no longer cross. But in 20 to 25 percent of all people, the two pieces do not fuse completely, leaving a persistent flap in the wall, which is the PFO. When the flap of the PFO opens, it allows continued blood flow from the right side of the heart to the left, just as it did before birth. This right-to-left flow becomes important because of the way the heart works after birth. The right side of the heart gets the blood back from the body after the oxygen is used and contains waste products which are picked up from the muscles and organs. The lung filters this blood and cleans it, adding new oxygen. The clean blood then returns from the lungs to the left side of the heart and is pumped all over the body to supply the organs, including the brain, with the nutrients they need to do their job. The wall's job is to keep the two sides from mixing. When the PFO is not sealed and blood can continue to flow from the right to the left, some of the waste products will cross to the left side, mixing with the clean blood before being pumped out to the brain. We think that the reason why some patients get migraine headache relief with the PFO closure procedure is that we are effectively preventing some unknown waste substance from reaching the brain, which was previously triggering the migraines. 
On the other hand, when migraines do not improve with the PFO closure, one possible explanation is that the PFO was never really involved in the headaches. It was an innocent bystander unrelated to the headache trigger, and those patients had a totally different underlying cause, but also happened to have a PFO. Until now, short of actually doing the PFO closure procedure, we had no way of knowing whether or not the PFO was mechanistically related to the headaches. But back in 2011, our group at Columbia discovered, really by accident, that if a patient with PFO was given a specific type of blood thinner called thianopyridines for stroke prevention, many with a history of migraines had a dramatic reduction or even elimination of the headache symptoms from this medication. The thianopyridine medications act specifically on the platelets in the blood, inhibiting the platelets from both clumping together to form blood clots and also from releasing chemicals which cause blood vessels to relax or constrict. Both the blood clots and the chemicals are normally filtered out of the blood in the lungs and do not reach the clean side of the heart. However, if these agents are allowed to cross through the PFO to reach the brain, they could both act as a migraine headache trigger. After these initial observations, we tested the thianopyridine medications in several hundred migraine patients who had a PFO. We found that a positive migraine response to the thianopyridine drugs, which was seen in over half of the patients tested, predicted who would have a migraine headache reduction with the PFO closure. We recently published two papers on these findings, the results of six years of patient observation. These results are still very preliminary, and without a formal medical trial, do not prove these findings. However, based on this data, W.L. Gore & Associates, a manufacturer of one of the PFO closure devices, the Cardioform Septal Occluder, is working with us to run a medical trial at hospitals across the United States called the Relief Migraine Trial, which will begin in 2019. This trial is designed to prove that the use of thianopyridine medications allows us to predict the migraine patients who will benefit from having the PFO closed. To find out if a PFO may be contributing to your headaches, or for more information about the PFO Relief Migraine Trial, please speak to your headache specialist. You can also get participation information and find study locations near you on the W.L. Gore Relief Migraine Trial website, or you can find the Relief Migraine Trial on Instagram and Facebook, all of which will be posted soon. Finally, you can speak with one of the principal investigators of the trial, Dr. Robert Summer at Columbia University in New York, or Dr. David Dodick at the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. Thank you very much for viewing the video. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact us.